something about uh, our hand weaving studio. It wa uh, was born in the uh, middle age, in, in, in the first uh, uh, years of the 19th century. No, 19. Uh, 20, 20th century. 20th century. By my grandmother. Excuse me, but uh, I can uh, become a, another time. No. Uh, this this uh, um, hand weaving studio uh, uh, was born in uh, um, the, the first years of the uh, 20th century, but it was uh, opened by my grandmother. In, in the first time, it was a, a school and a laboratory. Laboratory? Yes, laboratory. And, uh, um, now is also a museum, a museum because uh, we use all uh, 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 antique looms, uh, some looms from the uh, Renaissance, Middle Age and Renaissance, and some looms from the uh, 19th century, uh, the Jacquard looms um, by hand, also, everything by hand, um, every looms by hand. Now, if we, I want to explain something about our pattern. Uh, the, our pattern are really uh, traditional pattern. More of them uh, um, we can find uh, and we can see in Umbrian church and uh, in frescoes of Giotto or also in, ah, it's important to say that uh, one of uh, uh, antique um, tablecloths, Perugine and tablecloths, uh, what is now um, in a, a table of old uh, Ultima cena, old dinner, old the, the, uh, the last dinner of uh, Leonardo da Vinci in Milan. It's a, so it's a very important tradition of uh, our town, a Peruginian tablecloth. And my grandmother, um, Giuditta, um, copied the pattern from the uh, um, uh, tablecloth you can see in the Museum of Perugia, uh, uh, Galleria Nazionale dell'Umbria. The griffon with the fountain, the symbol of our town, and this a little uh, peacock. And uh, uh, really, the, the, table, uh, the Peruginian tablecloth uh, um, were uh, the first time only for the church, for the altar in the church. After two or, or three um, centuries, uh, the tablecloth, uh, the Perugina tablecloth, was used also for uh, our house, for the house. Um, and uh, uh, Caterina de Medici uh, took with her uh, some Perugina tablecloth in the, her trousseau. I don't know the English <laughs> for uh, this. Uh, uh, this word um, for name in Italian is dote, corredo, corredo. Uh, you can change, <laughs> I don't know. Now you can see other very important uh, pattern like this. These are lions. Uh, you can see in a, in a fresco of the of, in a church in uh, a Foligno, a little town close to Perugia and this uh, uh, pattern is very very old because it's a, a co uh, Coptic pattern Coptic panel, panel, pattern this is also another you can see in a church of Perugia St. Peter and is uh, a uh, the pattern was made by by, yes, very important. The pattern was made by Raffaello. It's really incredible. And uh, this is our uh, motto in Italian, per aspera ad astra. It's very important. We, uh, between the difficulty, you, you rise to the stars. 
this is the meaning of the, uh, the, these uh, words. And uh, after, uh, you can see something particular made by my daughter, Marta. My daughter Marta is uh, the director of the museum and the studio, and she is a really good weaver, hand weaver, and uh, um, she uses the old uh, pattern to make uh, a mis a mess, to mis mischiare, mis mischiare, mi Oddio, mischiare così. Janine, excuse me. Gian, mischiare? Mixed. To mix a very, a, a color and a pattern, a old pattern. And I think I, this also is it, uh, the same pattern. And Griffon is really important, Perugia. It's the emblem of our town and become from a long, long uh, time uh, because you can find uh, this Griffon also in uh, Etruscan tombs near Perugia. But uh, really the emblem of Perugia, the Griffon, uh, begins like emblem in the 13th century. And they use it in uh, very open weave uh, linen. You can have it in white or in natural, undyed. And it gives quite a different effect of basso relievo, which is like light and dark. It's always bordered by lovely tassels, and these are hand knotted tassels with just a cotton yarn. And in Deruta, they're very famous for their ceramics, so they make ceramics to go as the heads for the tassels. And this is also helps to be able to identify the work as coming from Deruta. I don't know if you can, can you zoom in on that one? These are a little bit different. It's a different style of hand knotting the tassels. Uh. Okay. There are many, many different styles. It's open to the, the interpretation of the, each embroiderer. So this is a form of Irish crochet that they do in the Lake Trasimeno area in Umbria. And it's all the, the, this is a bridal vest, the one that I had on. And they use it for edging. It's all crochet. They use it for edgings. They use it for doilies. And they can even use it to make these little butterflies. I've seen it in earrings as well. It's very attractive in earrings. Oh, that's different. And then this down here is a different form of crochet, but this is only done to this specific area in Umbria, the area of Orvieto, and it's, um, an Ira it's, it's a crocheted lace that's applied later where they make it three-dimensional by heating up an iron key, an old iron key, and they press the iron key on the back of the work to warp it 
so that it stands up and you get the three dimensionality of the of the designs. I'm not sure if you can see that these petals stick up a little bit higher than the rest of the design. And here as well you can see the deer's antlers are lifted a little bit in the different designs. This is very classic to have this hexagonal pattern in the center. It's all done with very, very tiny crochet needles. And then the edging is done with a crochet needle as well. It looks very, very tiny. And you can go as three-dimensional as you like just overlapping the layers. Once it's all put together, they paste it all down, they stitch it, t pin it all down to fabric, and then they hand crochet all the, the linking together so that they can, it becomes one piece on its own. So this is Punto Perugino. And it's a goblin stitch. And there's, you can do it in color, in tone on tone, or in varying shades of the same tone. Can you see? It has a lot of the open work in it that is similar to Hardinger. And it comes very specific to Perugia. <laughs> Okay, so the first lady is doing embroidery on tulle, and it's the embroidery, the, they do the embroidery on a tulle background, and she does different designs, so that's why she has all the hats and the veils and the brooches, and you mount the tulle on a piece of card, and then you stitch inside the holes of the fabric, of the tulle. Pezzo che, che fa 
in fiore. Ok. Cioè la parte solo sopra sì. di questo non basta per un giorno e mezzo Ok. So a day and a half, two days to do just the top part of the flower, which is what she's doing right now. Eh. No, è, 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 è,